Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. And uh, ladies that are in back, who that Sheila and Bree, um, towards the end of the message, I went out front, so you're going to be by yourself for about 15 minutes or so. You can handle it. <laughs> Amen. You know, um, I know a lot of times I've always have, uh, I think I've always, this is too hot. I think I've always uh, done a Mother's Day sermon. Um, a lot of preachers don't, they just stay up with where they're at with what they're doing. But I've always felt it's important to honor. I don't. I don't think I always do a Father's Day, but I always do a Mother's Day. I think it's important to honor the mothers. It's very, very profitable for us to honor our mothers. If you, Rob, if you put up Proverbs one, and we look at verses. Oh, Chris. Chris. You've been married. You've been married long enough. You look like each other. Did you hear me? I see you've been yeah, very long enough to look like that. Uh, I can repeat it. I, mean, I was thinking of Thor. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. All right, let's get on track. Uh, Proverbs 1 and 8 and 9. Now, I'm going to be reading out of the Passion Version, which she's going to throw up there probably is what, New King James or New Living Translation, one of those two. Um, and this passage here is my, it's, uh, my text, but not for the whole message. It's just the opening one I wanted to use for us today. It says that in verse 8, it says, Pay close attention, my child, to your father's wise words, and never forget. And I underlined mine, and never forget your mother's instructions. Uh, verse 9 says, for, the, for, the in, for their insight will bring you success, adorning you with grace-filled thoughts, and giving you a, the reins to guide your your decisions. Now, I as I read that several times, you, um, back up to verse eight, Wood Crystal. Um, as I read it several times, I thought um, because it's it's a connecting sentence with the commas. There's no periods, but actually, if you look at the end of that, with that was it a semicolon? Is that what that is at the end of mother? Verse nine refers to mom's word instructions, not dad's. It says. So if you look, pay close attention, my, my child, to your father's wise words. And never, never forget your mother's instructions for their uh, insight will bring you success. Okay, and all the good things. So we as children growing up, uh, what, what mom says to us is important. Always has been and always will be. Um, we don't, you know, you don't talk bad about someone's mama. I learned that in the army, you know. You don't talk bad about somebody's mama, you know, that type of stuff. But it's because moms are important. Um, in, in certain cultures, they're the, really the head of the household. Um, and there's nothing in our household. Debbie was there. No, just, uh, but we, you know, we, we shared that jointly. But again, and that's where it should be in a, in a, in a, godly, in a godly system. Yesterday I did a, uh, a funeral for some family friends that I grew up with. Their mom had passed away last Sunday and the service was yesterday. And as I was preparing for it all week, I was thinking about, um, she was a big Kentucky Derby fan. She died the day after the Kentucky Derby, so she got to her last Kentucky Derby. But she was buried the day before Mother's Day. And I got to thinking about how that affected that family. Today, how it affects that family. I'm not sure where they, where they were at spiritually. I used to be hang out with them all the time. I haven't seen most of them in years, but I, I know in the past they weren't walking with God. And you can see it in the eyes of them that they lost their mom. They've lost a very important person in their life. And, <clears throat> excuse me, because mothers hold a distinct <clears throat> place in the, in the hearts of all, of all of the children. You know, if you think about it, um, Mothers are probably the most special people on earth because of what they've done. You know, they, they are the ones that carry the baby. They're the ones that birth the baby. Although most guys, if you were around at that time, you know you were in on all that whole process. Because you lived with her for nine months. Watch it now. 
And on birth, turn back. And on birthing day, the day of that birth, you were right beside her as her head spun around, <laughs> and she spewed violent words at your face. My wife never did that. But I, mean, I was going to say, what are you talking about? <laughs> she never did, and I most most women do. I, well, breathe me, but I. I don't know <laughs> But the thing is, is that is that moms, moms are definitely very special people, and 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 they're they're connected to the children in ways that us as husband as husbands or as fathers can't be, because of the whole process of being part of that. And I know we live in a culture today where motherhood is not really a prime thing anymore. Matter of fact, it's being pushed aside, and 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 I think those women will one day regret that they've done that. I know that they would, because I know many that have had abortions and and lived to tell the tale of a sad tale that they gave that baby away like that. You know, the difference, I, a, a mother's voice is one that you always remember, right? Now, in this funeral process, as I at the end of it, I asked them, I said, um, do you have anything to say about, you know, her? And so a bunch of them said some things, you know, different words that she had said, and and uh, a couple of words I really don't want to repeat in church, but you know, it was like, um, but then one of my friends that I grew up with, we grew up all together on Spring Street, and it was a Spring Street crowd, there was about 20 of us boys and like two girls, so it was a great, great atmosphere, you know, um, and, uh, but the thing is, is one guy says, yeah, I can remember, because we had, that, that family had a bell, and when the bell rang, you headed home, well, Jean was the one that rang the bell, so she's instrumental in all of us out there playing, hey, but then one of my friends said, yeah, he says, I know another, I know another bell that went off. He says, your mom. But when she yelled out, Robert Allen, you needed to get going. When I heard those words, that both names being used, something was wrong. Okay? And uh, it was usually Steve and Joe that got it most. But, you know, it is. But, but if you heard those, and, and a mother's voice rings in your ears for a long time. The things that they say, the how they, they train you, you know, uh, throughout the years. I know that... Uh, I think I shared this before, but I remember when I was elected president of my junior class. My mom and dad worked second, so I didn't really see them during the school year other than weekends. And I, I walked in the kitchen where we, where we lived, and she had a great big poster board, put hail to the chief. I still have it on my wall. No, no, I don't. I, the, the thing is, is that moms are instrumental in a lot of ways of our growing up and molding and shaping us. Um, throughout the scripture, we could read a mother connections to their children in a lot of ways. Turn with me over to Judges chapter 13. And, and this is uh, Samson's mother. Now, I don't think uh, that they actually give her name. Am I correct? So, but if we start to read a verse 2, it says this in chapter 13. It says, And now there was a certain man from Zorah of the family of the Dantes, whose name was um, Manoah, and his wife. And his wife. She didn't get any. She just has his wife. So we'll give her a good name, like... Um, Gomer. That's a good name. Gomer. That's a good name. That's a good wife's name. So anyway, and his wife was barren and had no children. And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Indeed now, you are barren and have borne no children, but you shall conceive and bear a son. Now therefore, please be careful and not to drink wine or similar drink, and not to eat any unclean, anything unclean. That's probably beef and stuff like that. The, um, the, uh, be, for behold, you shall conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head, nor, and for the child will be of a Nazarite to God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Now, the whole backstory of that is, is Israel had been under the rule of the Philistine, Philistines for, I think, 20 or 30 years. And... Samson was being born to a, a woman that had never had a child. And the, not only was he under the vow, but she was stricken to do certain things that he was not supposed to do. She, was, she, kept, the, she kept it going like he didn't, but she kept doing it. Now if you drop on down to verse 7, it says, And now drink no wine, about the middle of it. Let me back in the top. And he said to me, Behold, you shall conceive and bear a son. Now drink no wine or similar drink nor eat anything unclean, for the child will be a, a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Now, that's her repeating back the instructions to her husband. 
saying, I can't do these things now. We may have partied before, we may have done these things before, but I can't do that anymore because I'm under instruction from God for the child that I'm going to deliver. And I know, as women give, are in the pregnancy phase of life, that there's certain things they can't do. In our societies, I was looking back, we used to smoke. We used, you know, Debbie did before me, but you know, I tried to catch up in the seven years of smoke. The thing is, is that we smoked, and I was looking at some pictures when we were in Texas pregnant with Rob. This may give us some, in some indication on Rob, too. But uh, uh, she was, she had, we were walking to this uh, wildlife park that we were going to with some friends in Texas, and she's, she has a cigarette in her hand. I thought, well, first off, it's unusual to see pictures of us having these things in our hands now, but it was, I, I saw that, I thought, I forgot that she had smoked when she was pregnant, not, Rob, for a short time, not a long time, but a short time. But the thing is, is that we have things that women, you, you can't do. It's not, it's not healthy for a pregnant woman to drink. It's not healthy for a, a pregnant woman to, Debbie has a, a, a co-worker whose daughter is uh, uh, into drug abuse and things, and she's had several children she has that custody of, but the last baby that was just born a month or so ago was a, um, a addicted to the drugs that the girl was, had been taking through her pregnancy. So a woman has to come into, during their pregnancy time, they're already preparing the way, and they've set themselves aside, unselfishly, for the things they may like to do for the child's sake, for the health and well-being of that child. So that's what was being asked of Gomer here. If we look at, drop down to verse 24 in that same chapter, it says, So the woman bore a son and called his name Samson, and the child grew, and the Lord blessed him, and the Spirit of the Lord began to move upon uh, Maniah, uh, Dan between Zora and Estill. The thing is, is that she prepared Samson's way to become who he was going to be for his lifetime. Now, he didn't follow through, but she did her job. She was very diligent about, she, she lived under instruction through the whole pregnancy and, and, and on. So if we drop over now for Samuel... Just a few pages over, if you brought a real Bible. The first Samuel, in verse one, I mean, chapter one, it says in verse five. Um, no, I don't want to go there. Let's go to verse uh, eleven. And she made a vow and said, "O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look upon the affliction of your maidservant and remember me, and forget and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child." Um, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall come upon his head. And it, and it, and it, it happened as she continued praying for, before the Lord that Eli watched her mouth, and Hannah spoke in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Now, she was praying to God, and she wanted, she didn't, nobody else needed to hear what she is saying, but she was praying for a change in her life and to be, be pre, uh, pregnant with a son. She didn't want a daughter, she wanted a son. She wanted somebody that would serve him and, 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 and honor him and glorify him. And that's exactly what Samuel did. If we turn over now to uh, verse 20 in that same passage, it said, So it came to pass in the process of time, Hannah conceived. That there, it came to pass in the process of time. I read, I read, I read that, I thought, well, it didn't just happen immediately. Sometimes we think in our microwave society that everything has to happen now. I know that when Rob and Crystal were trying to get pregnant, it took a little bit of time. It, 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 and they had this... <laughs> never mind, I'll just leave that alone. <laughs> I started to say, no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, the, the thing is, is it, <laughs> it, it took some time. But they were rewarded because of the diligent desire that they had with this... <laughs> It didn't come out right, did it? I don't care how, how you get around it. Rob, help me out, bro. <laughs> uh, it's, so anyway, Pastor, it, take, it takes... It, <laughs> in the process of time that Hannah conceived before her son, that was Crystal, in the process of time she conceived before her son, and called his name Samuel, saying, because I have asked for him from the Lord. You know, it's, she, she had desired a son. That's what she wanted. And, and, you know, again, we live in a society, we live in a time frame 
that women are not seeking motherhood anymore. It's, it's not a uns- it's an it's a selfish attitude that's out there right now. And I'm not talking about women that can't produce have children or whatever. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is is that there are so many out there that are going against what the scripture says, you know, about about mothers and what what they do. The, then there's another mother I want to talk about, and I, I want to drop you back to Second Timothy. Um, in Second Timothy, I was going to go. To Mary first, but I want to go to, to this one for Second Timothy. Paul writes Timothy two letters of instruction. Um, and the first one, he's talking about the things that are going on. But in the second one, Timothy must have had a conversation. I didn't do any extra studying, so I don't remember exactly. But he writes this second letter to Timothy. But in the introduction of this letter to Timothy, he says these words. He says, when I call to, rem- to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded it is in you also. A mother nurtures children at a level that the father can't. Even in that day, if we went back to Proverbs 31, the mother did most of the stuff she took care of. Him. The father says he was known at the gate of the city. What does that say? He's out doing what he needs to do to, to, to take care of the family. And that's still true today in a lot of ways. The thing is, is that the mother, and in this case, even the grandmother, their faith in God was so strong. And they had, they had pressed that in to Timothy. They had prepared him for what God wanted to use him for. Now, we don't know any more about Eunice and, and Lois, other than that Paul says, because of their faith that they had, they have, he says, I know it's in you. So a mother's responsibility to even the faith of God and working the faith of God in their children is vital. I, I, I love it when I see kids that, that you know, Bennett, last summer, what did, he, what did he memorize? He read the New Testament. He read the New Testament. Read the whole New Testament. Now, I'm not taking any way of Jeff because I'm sure Jeff was really involved in that. But I got a feeling Sarah was the biggest push. Why? Because she's with him the most. And so it's like, I know that my kids, if I want to use my kids as an example, which is not always a good thing, but you know, I know that mom, when I would come home, I worked, when we first got saved, we lived in Decatur, I was managing a toy store at Christmas time. You never want to manage a toy store at Christmas time. But I was gone all the time. But I would come home, and they had been listening to uh, Bible radio, uh, Bible records, and they were learning. Rob was just devouring the word at that young age, first grade, you know, and, and Zach, our youngest, he couldn't hardly talk, well, he still had struggles, but it's like, you know, <coughs> he said, he said, he said <laughs> it's just big words like the, it messed him up. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he would, you know, he, he, he had, his song, his favorite song was like, fire, shut my bones. And if you're old Pentecost, you remember that song from the Seventh-day God days. It's just like a fire, shut up in my bones. What? Okay. And so it's like, so I knew that she was spending her day instructing and, and teaching our kids things uh, about the things of God. And that was important. That was important to our family, important to our kids. Um, and Mary, if we look at Mary and Jesus, we don't have to really turn there. But in Luke, if you look at Mary, how she, out of all the women at the time, this, this still, this still uh, interests me, that God picked Mary. All the, women, all the other women, all the young, young maidens there, he came to Mary. What was it about Mary? There was something in Mary's heart that God knew would carry Jesus in the early years. In the early years of, of his life. Till he could come under the, what his ministry needed to be. Because a mother's responsibility as a child grows is to instruct them so they're prepared for adulthood. And I think every mother in this building has done that in one way or another. And um, I think that's important. Now, the woman I want to talk about the most today, though, that I want to sort of center in on, and I love this woman because I love saying the word Syrophoenician. I love it. I think it's great. The first time I ever heard a sermon preached like that, on that, I think it was either Pastor Callahan, or there was a guy in St. Louis, Louis, the Grace Church we used to go to down there when we go to St. Louis, and he preached a sermon on the Syrophoenician woman. I said, that is such a good title to a sermon, you know? And it's like, I, so, so I would practice it. Because when I first heard it, I was like, Zach, I couldn't pronounce it either. So that messed me up too. But uh, turn to Matthew chapter 15. Actually, 
It's talked about in two places in Scripture. This one in Matthew and then again in Mark. We're going to hit both of them um, in this process. Matthew chapter 15. And we're going to look at uh, 21, verses 21 through 28. Um, and in this passage, it doesn't call... Uh, the downside of this, it doesn't say for, sorry, for nation, it just says Gentile. Then Jesus went out, verse 21, Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of the Canaan of Canaan came up from the region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. Now, this woman's whole desire in her journey to see Jesus, what she'd heard about him was to get her daughter healed of this demon possession. That was why she was there. She was in a territory, well, let's read on. Uh, but he answered her not a word, and the disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. The disciples were always trying to um, sever him off from things. Did you know what's that? It's sort of, we're watching a series called uh, Designated, Designated Survivor. Survivor. That's really good. It's on Netflix. Anyway, it's a TV show. Well, the thing is, it's streaming, so we can just, there's no commercials. You can just watch one after another. After, and, um, and I binge watch, so it's like, hey. Anyway, so anyway. But they, they do that with the president. You know, they have all these people around. No, you can't talk to the president. No, you can't see the president. No, you, and that's what these disciples seem like they kept doing. No, you can't. No, you can't. he's busy. He's doing this or he's doing that. But they said, send her away for she cries out after him, after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of Israel. Jesus had a mission. His mission was to reach the Jewish people, Israel. His mission was to get Israel's attention. And he said, that's why I'm here. I'm here for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Those, I think, are the words that really got Jesus' attention. Because he had a heart after those that sincerely seek after him. He still does. If you need, your, need his help, those three words, Lord, help me, is where you want to start. If you feel like you have everything's coming against you and everything's pressing on you, those three words, Lord, help me, gets their attention. And you can pray all the big fancy words and have all the degrees by your name and do all, but those three words summon Jesus' attention to this lady. And he hasn't changed since this time. So he, goes, she, he, showed, so he says, but he answered and said, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. Now, that seems harsh, doesn't it? But you have to remember the structure of the time was that the, Israel, the Israelites were a population, the Canaanites were a population, and it's sort of like having someone, some foreign population come and say, well, we need this, and you need to help us. Well, the President of the United States, his responsibility is the United States. His responsibility is not really Cuba or Venezuela or all these, it's not, that's not his responsibility. His responsibility is the United States, well, that was what Jesus was. His responsibility was to win the loss to, to, to the Lord, of the loss of Israel. And so that dogs, that little dog saying is, is not as harsh as it seems because he just separating who they are. And he goes on and she said, yes, Lord, even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. And Jesus answered and said to her, oh, woman, great is your faith. If you're willing to sit and take the crumbs of what I have to offer, great is your faith. You know, sometimes we want this great big massive thing to come to us and this great big change, but we're not, we, we, we walk by the little blessings that God puts in our life every day. She says, I'll take any little blessing. I'll take any portion of what you've got to offer. Because she knew Jesus didn't do things small anyway, but also she needed, to, she needed that for her daughter. She says, let it be as you desire. And I, as I read that, I, um, again... It just popped in my head. Um, two years ago when I went to Ghana, I went to Branson first. And I think I said this, I told you guys that that trip was the first time in all the years I've been gone uh, that she had, if anybody was leaving out of the country to go do mi mi uh, missions work or ministry work out of the country, she was going to, on Saturday morning you were to be there and they were going to pray for you. Well, when she set that up, she didn't know Brother Copeland was going to be there that morning. Well, she just had him pray. All week long, I have been praying, Father, I just, I just want to go do, I want to go do this for you. I want to kick the devil in his teeth. I want, 
And I and, and I don't remember exactly all the prayers I was praying the whole time and just sitting there. And when Brother Copeland came up to me, he laughed first. I, that sort of threw me off. He's like, man. <laughs> I mean, could you have not laughed at the other guys around me? But he chuckled. And he says, just as you have desired, it is unto you. Just as we desire, God wants to fulfill our every need. Whatever your need is today. Whatever the problem is, whatever, the, whatever it is that you're after, don't be discouraged because you don't see it all come at once. Realize that there's blessings along the path. I, 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 I mean, Rob Westbrook, what's going on? What God is doing in him and healing that is exciting. The bad part is he weighs less than I do now. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, seriously... Look at him and see what God is doing. Every day, every step of the way, he is healing him and restoring his health, and he'll never have that problem again. That's the blessings yes. that we're talking about here. Right. He didn't get all, he didn't walk in there that day. They would have liked that. Walked in, they said, Which, it's gone. No need for nothing. But God is taking care of it every step of the way. And that's where they're building their faith. That's where we're building our faith, is in, the, is in that process there. It's like when Rob and Christopher were praying with Dante. We got a call from Rob. They're at the hospital. And, they're, and, and, and I, I don't remember if you said it, but I, I remember the, what came on me was, this is not good. When he says they're, they're saying it, I don't remember if you said they said it's not good or what they said, but he said, but they're, and, they're, and they're pulling out what looks like tissue. Did you say tissue? And it's like, I'm not a nurse. I've been married one for 100 years, so I know what, you know, it's like it's not a good thing, you know. But what God did, I think he was just clearing the passageway. There was junk, junk in there that didn't need to be in. It's coming out. And God prepared. And look at Dante now. There's nothing missing that boy right now. He's there. You know? He's solid. I thought about Ashley. I was looking at some pictures the other day of Ashley and Dan's wedding. And she picked up old Zeke. And, you know, Zeke's like a feather. You know, you pick him up, you throw him across the room, no problem. Dante, on the other hand. You pick him up, and you know you've got some muscle at work, right? And she picked him up, and she's struggling. She, I, I, and it's like, he, but he had, he wanted to be held. I think there's coming a time now where he realized that people just can't pick him up all the time. Anymore. But the thing is, is that the blessings of God in our children are, are like a piecemeal. They come in, and, they come, and it changes. But you don't lose the course. What's, we go back and we look at those two first ladies that we talked about, and, and uh, Samuel's mother and Samson's mother, they were diligent about doing what they needed to do for those boys. And along the way, and we know how boys are as they grow, they, you know, they're in and out of things, right? She was, but this lady here, the Syrophoenician woman, was a woman of faith. She came to Jesus because she had heard about him, and she came from her land of Canaan, a Gentile approaching him and knowing that she's not even supposed to be in, his, in, his, in the midst of him. But she's there. She's a woman of faith. She's aware of the customs and he's not going to associate with Gentiles. But she came anyway. Her response to the, Jesus' response to the test of her faith was, you're going to get what you're asking for. See, faith is a whole process we need to look at as we're raising children. You know, <clears throat> I know we weren't a Christian home growing up, but I know my mom had faith and 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 thing and maybe maybe in things of God I don't remember but I, I do know that as she raised my brother and I and I'm sure she made some mistakes in him and you, you could tell that right I mean it's, no he's good we we actually we are the other day, I, don't, I haven't seen him in a while so the other day we're out I, I decided sometimes I'm out right I'll drive by dad's grave so I, I was sitting there for a moment uh, just sitting there it was a nice day window down the truck and all of a sudden, this car pulled out. I thought, that's like mom's car. What's that, mom? The guy's got a beard. Well, I did, last time I saw Steve, he didn't have a beard. He just all bald, you know? But he, he, he gets out. And we stood there in the cemetery and talked for a while. You know, we hadn't talked for a while, but uh, he's on Facebook now, so he's always, he's following behind on Facebook, friending all my friends, I think is what it is. <laughs> I sent him a bunch of pictures, and he saw a picture of him and, and uh, Dad and I um, in a little house over here across Morton, who used to be by the high school. It's not there anymore, but, and he made a comment on it. And, and so it's like, I don't know why I told you all that. The, the, the thing is that, is that I know that my mom, as she raised us, she instilled in us a lot of things. And her biggest thing was, wait till your dad gets home. <laughs> now, you want to strike fear in a kid's heart? Tell them, wait till your dad gets home. You know, because it's like, 
I'm dying today. I'm not ready to die today. And I always figured my dad would say, hey, I don't have to. He, he's just gone. I'll fix him. I can have another one. No big deal. You know? The thing is, is that as we were growing up, mom was always there. She was the one that my dad ruled with an iron fist to a degree. Um, not, not, well, it was really an iron belt, but it was, it was, it was iron. You know? The thing is, is that my mom was always there. She was, and, and a lot of times um, when we do something wrong, and she'd, say, and she'd be so mad, and you knew when she was maddest, she cried. Dad, come on, I hate it when she cried. <laughs> so not only did I feel bad about getting caught and doing what I did, but now she's crying. Why do you got to cry? <laughs> but she would say, wait till your dad, dad gets home, and then... And then, but and, I, and, you're, and you're and you're and you're crying inside. You go, please, God, please. And I didn't know God. I just praying. Just say, zap me now, take me now. And and then Dad would get home. It's sort of like the Christmas story. You ever seen the Christmas story? They play night and day all the way through Christmas. And and the 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 the, the one the older what's what, what's the oldest kid's name? Huh? Ralphie gets in a fight and he's beating the snot out of this guy. Swearing all the way, right? What's the little boy's name? What's the little young boy's name? That was the little boy's name, wasn't it? No, Rocky was the oldest. And so, so his little brother, she goes, because he, he's up there sniffling, he's up there knowing when he gets home, his glasses are broke, and he's crying, he's done all these things, and he knows death is coming to his doorstep. And his little brother, mind you, he's hiding under the kitchen sink. Why? Because Ralphie's going to die tonight, because dad's going to kill him. <laughs> But what does mom do? They sit down for supper, and Ralphie's sitting at the end of the table, and he's got his head down, man. He's got, I have no appetite whatsoever. I don't want a last meal. And, 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 and all of a sudden, the dad asks a question, and Ralphie's waiting for mom to tell him, and mom, oh, it's just a pretty good day. It's just that nothing said. And all of a sudden, like, Ralphie goes, whoa, hey, this is a good, I'm hungry now. You're kidding me. <laughs> The thing is, is that's what mothers do sometimes. They don't always tell dads everything. I know that she didn't tell me everything that the kids did. Because Rob's still alive today. <laughs> so the thing is, is that I know that there's steadfast, there's, there's, this woman here was steadfast in her, to get the results she wanted. She was a woman of faith. She was not swayed by what Jesus said to her in the beginning. Well, you're not going to give food to the dogs. That didn't sway her. She came right back at him with an obvious good answer. A good challenge. And her reply and the statement was, was persistent. She stayed the course. Good mothers stayed the course. Even when the kids look like they're way off track, mothers don't sway. Why? Because there is a strong connection in that child and that mom from the very beginning. They felt that first movement. They felt they've gotten bigger. The whole thing is... And, and, and as, they, as they deliver that child out into the world, there is that pain, and both the, they're both feeling the pain. The child is feeling the pain being disconnected physically from the mom, and the mom's feeling that pain. But yet, they're still one and the same. And I guess maybe that's the reason why they say women don't remember the pain so much of childbirth, because of that, the love that they feel for that child that they've carried for nine months. She, this lady was persistent. Her reply was a statement of persistency. She was returning him... Uh, returning home, she was not returning home without getting what she came for. She was determined to have her daughter healed. See, that's what it takes us. Our persistency is vital to the success of our prayers. You just can't pray and if it doesn't happen right away. It says that in a process of time, a prayer was made, and in a process of time, she became pregnant and, and bore a son. Our prayers are our birthing process. We have to stay persistent. I remember as Rob, and, and we've heard that he's probably just, I just want to say because it's popped my head twice now. As Rob was wandering, and he was wandering strong, he would come home. And Debbie would say, not to his, well, I think, I think at times she even said it to his face, you're, you're a mighty man of God. But I know she said it time and again when he wasn't there. Because of this, because of her fear of where he, she, we saw him headed. The thing is, is that her persistency to proclaiming over him you're a mighty man of God is the reason why he is a mighty man of God today. We cannot lose heart when our answers are delayed. It talks about how Daniel's prayers were answered the day he prayed them. But it took time for them to get to the angel to actually get to him. We have to remember that 
Our time frame is not God's, nor is God's time frame ours. We have to remember that God works out of time. So when we think minutes have passed, it's not anything for God. It's like same day. It's same moment. You pray, God's done it. It's done. It's complete. And that's the way we need to be. When we pray for our children, mothers and fathers, when we pray for our children, we've got to believe that it's already done, that it's already stated. It doesn't matter what, we, what we're looking at. It doesn't matter what we're seeing. <clears throat> have you ever... Have, I, this, this thought came in as I put these notes together. I was like, and as I, I was thinking about the funeral I had done, I was thinking about the boys. And as I look, you know, people's eyes tell you a lot. I mean, you can look in somebody's eyes and you know that they're struggling about something. You know that there's joy there. You know that there's their thinking processes there going on. But as I looked at, into those boys' eyes, I, and I'm thinking it was different. And, and they were all three different. The oldest son, um, there was just a real sense of loss in his eyes. You could tell he's had some illnesses himself over the years and recent years. And he was just, you could tell, the, the second son who spent most of the last 12 years taking care of mom, there was a sense of, of, um, of grief. You could see it in his eyes. The third son who was the youngest and uh, I guess seemingly just saying, you could see the disconnect in his eyes. It was like, I'm here because I have to be here. That was, as I looked at body language, that's what, that's what I saw. The thing is, is they had all just lost their mom. And I'm not saying that any one of them's <coughs> sense of loss was greater than the other. I think they all agree. I think today they're all grieving and have grieved since last Sunday and will for a while. And grief is a process that takes time. And sometimes people stay in a grieving stage for a long time, and you shouldn't. Uh, as a believer, to be real honest with you, I, I remember when, my, when we did my dad's funeral. And I had a first cousin come up, and, and we were standing there in line of the service, and uh, Glenn said, uh, I don't know how you did it. I don't know how you did that. Because, but to me, I wasn't burying my dad. I was saying goodbye for a short time. I'm going to see him again. I mean, do I miss him? Yeah, but the thing is, is that that process now... Um, I thought about that yesterday because um, Gene, you know, the same age as my mom, we grew up in and, and I thought, well, what will I be like when that ha when that day happens? My mom says she's not dying anyway, so I really don't have to worry about it. <laughs> um, and uh, she, she she's one of those has a bumper sticker on a car. I'm spending my children's inheritance, so <laughs> no, I'm just teasing on that. My dad would have done that, but my mom's not. The thing is, but I guess what I'm saying is, is that. When we come to that point in time where there's that separation, for children with mothers, it's different. And all of us are children still when it comes to our mom. All of us at times have a need just to talk to mom, just to do those things. You and I must develop a persistency of the of Syrophoenician woman, though, when it comes to our children. We both, men and women, need to do that. We need to have such great faith that it endures until we see the answer taken care of. It doesn't matter what we think is going on. You and I, especially moms today, because it's Mom's Day, we need to get a hold of the fact that we're not letting go of what we want for our children. Now, I'm going to ask you ladies to do something here in just a moment. Where did Bree go? <laughs> you get your pastor doing it. This is your day. I love Mother's Day. I love honoring mothers. Um, but if you, have, if you have children that are wandering the earth, you know what I mean by wandering the earth, right? They're not really living the way you'd like to see them live. Or they have an illness or a disease. Or they're just out, they're sort of like in between everything. Yeah, they're, they, they come to church. Yeah, they say they love God. Or they're in another church. Then we know it's not the best church because it should be or that kind of stuff. But uh, the thing is, is that if you have a child out there that you're concerned about. Now, I'm not even just saying mother. So we know that we honor all women today. Because as Debbie said earlier, you may not be a biological mother, but you're a spiritual mother. And I have met many aunts that have been as much a mother to the to their nieces and nephews as sometimes a mother, sometimes more so. Um, but if you have those, I want you to I want you to take your stand today, and I want you to make a proclamation. So I want you to stand up. We'll wait for me to get in here to do this. All the ladies in this room, stand up. 
Don't hesitate. Just stand up. <laughs> All right, good. How many times I got to tell you? That's not persistence, ladies. I'm telling you right now. We're going to wait a moment until Bree gets in here. Yeah. Whatever happened to her? She was there the whole message to the end. She probably did that. Yeah. And, and, and because of some other days, we're getting out of here before noon. <laughs> Can I let her out? I'm sorry. I had to get them organized. With the Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> they better almost be done because we are. <laughs> All right. Here's the deal. I, as I was telling them before you, while you were gone, is you're gonna make, you guys are going to make a proclamation today. Okay? So I'm going to have you repeat after me. It's, it's for your children. It's for your grandchildren. It's for your nieces and nephews. And you can bring them to mind. Whoever you're making this proclamation for, you bring it up and you keep it in your mind. If you want to say their, their, their names out, you can. I know you need to pray a lot for Brie. I understand that, Gail, but you might want to put that under your breath. Um, if you have next-door neighbor kids that you like, that you love, base kids, uh, people like anyone, that's, anything that are kids that you need to proclaim this over, then let's do that. So you're going to repeat after me. Today. Today. I. I. Stand the gap. Stand the gap. For my child, for my child, my children, my children, my grandchildren, my grandchildren, my nieces, my nieces, my nephews, my nephews. I stand, I stand to see them come to Christ. To see them come to Christ. I stand, I stand to see them grow in Christ. To see them grow in Christ. I stand, I stand to see them heal. To see them heal. I stand, I stand to see my loved ones. To see my loved ones, the miraculous, the miraculous, come to their lives, come to their lives, just as mothers and grandmothers, just, just as mothers and grandmothers of the old, of the old, came before you, Father God, came before you, Father God, today, today, on my Mother's Day, on my Mother's Day, I stand, I stand, and claim victory, and claim victory, Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank right. you, Lord. You may be seated now. I want to close off with this. Lad, you had your little treat of straw, chocolate covered strawberry. Did everybody get chocolate? All the ladies get a chocolate covered strawberry at one one? Thank you. It was wonderful. Okay, good. Good, because I have some up there and I'm having the rest. Now just, just, just tease it. Just tease it. These plants here, I decided not to get you a lion. <laughs> a lion plant. She says annuals or lion plants. I, I decided to get you. A cone flower. Now let me tell you about a cone flower. I know a little bit. It's also called an azalea, right? No. No. What? It's echinacea. Echinacea. Okay, I just started the name. <laughs> I don't care. It's a cone flower is easier for me to say. But here's the deal with the cone flower is, is that they represent spiritually healing. Healing for what? Physical? Spiritual? Whatever you, you feel like your, your family needs. As you plant this plant, or I guess as the guys plant it for you. <laughs> but as you plant this plant, it's going to blossom this year. It's going to grow. It's going to look all pretty and beautiful. There are all kinds of different colors of them over here. So you're going to get to choose what you want. This one's a, a hot coral. Anyway. So anyway, it's pretty. So this picture, right? That's what it's going to look like this summer. The thing is, it's not going to die. It comes back next year. So it's it's not no. <laughs> it doesn't lie. It will come back. When you plant it, it says, thank you. I'm going to grow really pretty for you every year for the rest of your life. If you water it. If you water it. <laughs> well, you don't have to worry about it. you got plenty of water out there anymore. So, but every year it's going to come back. But here's the deal. As I say about this last night, I was closing this all up and that, that proclamation that you just made, I don't want you to just walk out of here and forget you made it. But I want you every day of the rest of the year as you walk by this. You may not walk by it every day, but every time you walk by it, as it, as it starts to blossom and look really pretty, and you go, oh, that's really nice. Pastor Bob got this plant that comes back all the time. It didn't lie. It's just there. I want you to, rem I want you to say this in yourself. I will see my prayer today answer the next time this blossoms next year. By next year, the prayers you prayed over your children are going to be full. 
there's a process of being birthed. Okay? You started, forgive me, the pregnancy today. And in 12 months, not month, nine, maybe five, maybe six, and maybe it may take no 12. But by next year, this time, when this is blossoming and getting ready to blossom again, your prayers that you pray over your children will be answered from today. I want you to remember the prayer you made today. I want you to remember what God's going to do in your life as you walk through life. And this is going to be a reminder to you. You know, a lot of times when people pass away, they, build, they put a lot of people plant trees in I think the tree in Mindy and Aaron's front yard was when Kaylin died and they planted it. And she because I know it's been around, she said, 12 years, and that would have been his. And it doesn't grow much, but I think it's supposed to be the size it is. But this will be the similar feature. I didn't want to buy trees because they're too hard to carry in. And Rob, <laughs> Rob said, please don't do that. He didn't want to dig up the ground that day. I'm not planting a tree. You plant. But this is not hard to do. You just put it in the ground and, and take care of it and watch what God does with it and watch what He does with your prayer and your proclamation today. Now, gentlemen, our response to this also is that we stand with them. We stand with them and saying we're going to walk alongside of them. You know, as a, as a woman is uh, spending nine months getting bigger for us, I, I looked at my daughter-in-law yesterday and I said, are you getting fat or are you pregnant? She never looks pregnant. I did. But it's all right. I felt about that. Yeah. But I, I, she knew I was joking. I think. No. She didn't cry next to me. She might have cried. I talked to her last night. Very Yeah. That's okay. That's okay. That's fine. She'll like me better later. So it's like, uh, but anyway, when I didn't say that to you, Crystal, so you ought to feel good about it. <laughs> <laughs> but as 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 our wives, as our wives when they're bearing our children, change. We, we stood by them. We 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 were, we were walking with them, right? We were, what's the matter? But right? he's not recording anymore. So it's okay. Oh yes. He oh. Is. <laughs> you're, you're already in the grave. You want to start pulling the dirt in now? I was here for 46 minutes. <laughs> for when the, when the judge starts asking questions. <laughs> At any rate, gentlemen, we're to walk with them. Just as we walk with them in the birthing of the children, and we walk with them as this year proceeds. We, we, we live in, we, we're walking in a year of awareness, right? That, anybody? I did my bed. I did my bed. Okay, oh. oh, Rob's got it on his phone. If you have it on your phone, I'll give you that ground too. <laughs> Thing is, is we're in the year of awareness of everything we do, everything we say. We need to be aware of it. Because we're changing the planet by what we do, by what we pray, by what we say. Amen? So, as we walk this out this year, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to see some changes in our children. They may be adult children, they may be, they may be smaller children. They may be your biological children, they may be your spiritual children. They may be your neighborhood children, whatever. They may be your grandchildren. I've got almost 13 grandkids. Well, I guess really do. You've got 13. He, he's, she's in there. Oh, Rob, you have to fix the plaque that you made us last year. You have to add lake to it now. So, But uh, the thing is, is that it, it's a matter of us walking this through. So ladies, feel free to take whichever one you would like. That's your gift from us to you on Mother's Day. Um, it'll last a lot longer than that chocolate covered strawberry you devoured earlier. Okay? Um, <laughs> He's so graceful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's Mother's Day. <laughs> All right, so ladies, pick your plant. We, we appreciate your, well, all you've done for us, all you've done for our children, we appreciate that. All you've done, moms, all you've done for us, we, we appreciate that. It's a special day for me, because on Mother's Day, because I have my mom here, and I have my wife here, I have daughter-in-laws oftentimes, and they're all the moms of my life. But then, all of you are moms of my life, and I appreciate it about all of you. God bless you. Have a great week. Some of you, I would like to see everybody on Thursday nights. It's so good.